so this video is all about the Cody Rocky. So first thing, we're going to look at the robot itself. So this uh, bottom part with the treads is called the Rocky. And you can see that it's got a sensor on the bottom to be able to follow a line and also um, to sense distance. This part is the Cody, and you can see that it has three buttons that allow you um, to press. It has an IR sensor there, a speaker, the screen, the volume up and down. That's where you plug in the cord. And that's your power button right on the side there. You can see that they snap together. And it also comes in the box with some color coding cards. So your um, robot can actually sense color using that little sensor on the Rocky. Comes with an instruction manual and a cord. So now that we have done a little tour of the Cody Rocky, I'm going to show you how you can program uh, the Rocky to do different things, like go through your maze. So first thing you need to do is open up a web browser, and then you want to go to mblock.cc. And that's going to take you to the mblock website, which is the site that allows us to uh, program the Cody Rocky. So there's two different options for the software. You can have block-based coding, or the Python coding editor. Python allows you to write your code um, out in text, and the block-based one allows you to drag and drop different blocks. So we're going to actually use the block-based coding editor. So we're going to click on that one and then say code with blocks right here. It's always good to start with the block-based coding, and once you get a little bit more familiar, maybe you could move on to Python. So the first thing that's going to pop up is that uh, you're going to want to download mlink2. So this is a little piece of software that makes the connection between the computer and your robot. So we're going to go to download, and you can see that there are lots of options here for depending on what type of computer that you're using. So it does work with Chromebook. Uh, which is great and um, I'm going to choose the one for Windows because that's the type of computer that I'm on. Now it does mention here that the Python editor is not supported on Chromebook but the drag and drop block based coding program does work on a Chromebook. So choose the one that's going to work for you and then you want to install it. So I'm going to just save it on my computer because it's a, a Windows computer. With the Chromebook, it's going to take you to um, the Chrome store and you just have to um, allow that program to be used on your computer. If you have any issues, you can contact Brilliant Labs and uh, we can get in touch with your school in order to make sure that you'll be able to have access to that. it's done you want to make sure that you run um, mlink2 by clicking this and give it access this is um, quite a bit simpler with the Chrome extension and now I'm going to click create now to open up the block based coding platform so it comes with um, a project that's already preset, uh, but we don't need to use that one. I'm just going to go to File and New, and it's going to give us a blank sort of canvas. And I also wanted to show you here that if you come up to this little planet or globe sign here, you can change the language um, if you need to have your platform um, to be in another language like French, for instance. So uh, now we have this new area to work with. We're going to talk a little bit um, about how things are set up. So as you can see here, there is a tab for devices. And the standard one is the Cody Rocky. So that's the one that we're going to use. But you can also add, there's other different robots that you can uh, use. So that's an option there as well. But we're going to stick with the Cody Rocky. So all we have to do is take the Cody. So just sort of the head portion of your Cody Rocky. That's the portion where we're going to add the code. And you want to plug it into a USB port on your computer or your Chromebook. Now what we want to do is power it on. Power on the Cody Rocky, just pressing the power button on the side. And we want to click connect here. And we're going to say connect. 
that we have options to upload, disconnect, and settings. I also wanted to draw your attention to this how to use device, and it gives you a great overview um, of the Kodi Rocky, how to connect it. If you ever forget, that's a great resource for what to do. So now we can go ahead and start adding some code in for our Kodi Rocky. So we, this month's challenge is going to be about getting your Kodi Rocky to navigate through a maze. So one of the first things that you're going to need to know how to do is have your uh, Kodi Rocky move around, right? So um, we're going to take a look at the different blocks that we have here. They're all organized around what they do and they're all color coded, which is great. So all of the ones here under emotion have to do with changing how the Cody Rocky's face, for lack of a better way to put it, um, uh, the lights on the face light up and look. The looks allow you to uh, change the eyes on the Cody Rocky yourself and um, also have the words scroll across the screen. The lighting ones have to do with the LEDs that are on the rocky part of your Cody Rocky, so the, the one that kind of drives around that bottom part. Um, obviously, it can play tones and things too, so the action ones are really what we're going to be using a lot of today. But let's keep going. So our sensing ones allow um, us to be able to access the sensors that are on built into our Cody Rocky. So the infrared um, options here are uh, something that we may get into a little bit later, but it's a way to sort of trigger your Cody Rocky um, using uh, a remote control. Our events we're going to be using, and we'll talk about those in a little bit. Our control options are what give us uh, the ability to make loops and have our Cody Rocky answer some questions. Um, and be able to do a little bit more complex coding. Our operators allow us to do a bit of math if we ever need to, and we have variables here as well. There are also some extensions for the Cody Rocky, so we have these uh, here as well. Uh, we may again get into those in later videos. One of the first things that obviously we're going to want to learn how to do is to make our Cody Rocky go forward, backward, left and right, so that it can navigate through this maze. What we always have to start with, though, are our event blocks. Our robot needs some way to know when to run its code. So you can see that um, these options here look a little different than some of the other coding blocks, and they're rounded on the top, and that's how we know that they're start blocks. So we could make our code, for instance, run whenever the Cody Rocky starts up. Um, we could make it run when it feels like it's being shook because it has sensors inside of it. But I think for this um, particular video, we're going to start really simple and use the buttons on uh, the Kodi in order to tell our robot when we want the code to start. So I'm going to make some movement happen when the A button gets pressed. And if you remember from earlier, the action, or these blue um, options here, are the ones that move the Cody Rocky around. So you can see we have um, different options here. Move forward, you can select if you want it to be at a certain amount of power and for how long you want it to move. Again, we have backwards and we have our turn right and left. These keep forward and keep backward actually use a sensor inside of uh, the Cody for it so it will stay on a straight path. Sometimes with some of these other ones you get a bit of drift. You can also um, tell exactly how many degrees you want um, the Cody to move uh, when it's turning left or right. So if you've done in math class the 360 degree circle, if you think about that, 15 degrees, for instance, will just be a little bit. Um, but if you want it, it to move like a full 90 degrees, you can change the, these options in here. And again, we have just some uh, blocks that you can choose if you want to move forward, backward, left, or right. And um, also, you can change the power and the speed of the wheels uh, on the right and the left if you want to be able to make, say, sharp turns or slower turns. Uh, usually, quick or high-powered turns are less accurate than slower um, power turns, but these are things that you'll all that you'll have to sort of figure out and get to know about uh, your Cody Rocky. And obviously, um, the stop moving will 
stop the movement. So let's just choose an option uh, so we can get some movement happening here. So I'm going to say move forward at, why not? Let's do 100% power for three seconds. And then um, maybe I want the Cody Rocky to turn left at 20 degrees until done. So let's just see what that does. So now if we want to get that code onto our Cody, all we have to do is come over here and press upload. And it's going to load that onto our Cody. So let's give it a try. You can unplug uh, the Cody from your computer or you can leave it plugged in. Obviously, you wouldn't want to leave it plugged in and have it roll off of a table, so it's always best to put it on the floor. Let's press our A. So we can see that that 20 degree turn is sort of a slight turn. Now, if you want to have your robot make a sharper turn, you would just increase the number of degrees here. So what you could do in order to navigate through your maze is keep going um, with these move blocks. So you could use trial and error in order to get your robot to do the movements that you need it to do. There are some ways that you could make this a little bit more efficient too, using the sensors. So that's what we're going to go over now. So for instance, we know that our Cody Rocky has a little sensor on the Rocky um, that can flip up and down uh, to allow us to measure distance and color, uh, things like that. So we could use that sensor in order to um, get our robot to automatically detect if there's something in front of it and then make a choice about which way it's going to turn. So let's have a look at what that code might look like. So we can get rid of um, this code here just by dragging it right over to here and you'll see the little um, trash can will show up. And we're gonna go um, over to our um, sensors, so sensing. And we can look at all the different options that we have in terms of getting at sensors. There's one that's built in uh, for obstacles ahead. So basically that's going to let us access that sensor on the Rocky to be able to tell us if there's something ahead of the robot or tell the robot if there's something ahead of it. So um, we're going to be using that one so we can just drag it out here. But we need some way in order for our code to ask that question of or get the Rocky to ask that question of the environment. And the perfect way to do that is in our controls here. So what we're going to do is use an if-then um, statement. So this one here is the one that we're going to use. And you can see perfectly that um, this sort of diamond shape here fits right in to this section here. So if an obstacle is ahead, then what do we want to have happen? So maybe we want um, our Cody Rocky to turn so we know where they are in our actions. So maybe we want uh, to turn left at 90 degrees, just like a quick turn to get out of the way. So else is what you want the Cody Rocky to do if it doesn't have an obstacle ahead of it, right? So if the obstacle is ahead, then you want to turn left. Else, what do you want the Cody Rocky to be doing? Maybe we want the Cody Rocky to be moving forward. So. If we were to try this code now on our robot, what it's going to do um, is the Cody Rocky is going to check if, if there's an obstacle ahead and then it's going to turn left if there is and it's going to go forward if there's not. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to make this check once. Uh, so what we need to do is make this piece of code run over and over and over again so that our Cody Rocky is constantly checking to see if there's something in front of it. And we can also do that by using our controls right here. And if we put a forever around here, it's going to constantly keep looking to see if there's something in front of it. And it's going to turn to the left if it does see something in front of it. So we're going to try that out. When you're testing this out, make sure the sensor is facing forward. As you can see, it works. 
but we don't have any way for our robot to stop because we've said keep checking this forever. So maybe we would want to add something in um, in order to make our robot stop. So let's go back to our events and maybe we want the B button here to be our stop. So we come back to actions and we can say stop moving. And we can also go into controls and say stop all. Great, so now we have a way to stop our robot and start our robot. So this is really all the tools that you'll need in order to start coding your robot to go through your maze. You might want to also think about maybe some of the other sensors. So maybe you'd want to use the color sensors in order to make it so that your robot can identify which obstacle is which. Right, so in the challenge brief, we wanted you to have four obstacles in your maze. Now, what would happen if you colored those obstacles? Then you would be able to write in your code that you have your robot do a left turn if it sees the red obstacle and maybe a right turn if it sees the blue obstacle. So I'll leave that up to you to try out and experiment on your own. So good luck, and if you have any questions, let us know.